Well, I'm back making gardening week videos again now that I've got a little bit more time. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice time on the allotment as we're sort of winding down on summer and starting to transition to all the sort of autumn, winter and spring veg. These are my purple spreading broccoli. I've just taken the covers off um, and I moved the covers over the beetroot and I will soon move some over some lettuces. Uh, just going to get this, give this a weed. It's not been weeded since I put the covers on. Well, since I planted, uh, it's not too bad. You know, the weed levels, I t generally don't weed too often. Uh, I just find it's a bit more efficient to sort of do it every month or something like that. And it generally kind of coincides with doing a tour, which is why people seem to think that my allotment's always weed free. It takes me about an hour to go through the whole plot and give it a good weed. And what I've got here, as I say, purple sprouting broccoli for uh, sort of the March, April sort of time scale. Uh, I've got some Savoy cabbages down there and I've got some cauliflowers and calabrese down there. Uh, we've got three successions of cauliflowers and calabrese on the go. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get this finished off and uh, bring you back. So that looks a bit, lot better to me. You probably can't see the difference, but I'm going to put these fence pins in now to support the PSP. The cabbages and the cauliflower don't need supports. Well, they'd probably like them, but they're not going to get them. Um, it's pretty windy here. So I do really like fence pins. They make an enormous amount of difference. And obviously I've got to push them in a bit more, but uh, I'm just positioning them. And I put them generally so that they support them from the prevailing wind which is northwest so I'm putting them southeast and yeah I mean these are such a great discovery I credit uh, Nigel Dukes from uh, the Muddy Boots channel for introducing me to these fence pins they're so great you know the amount of money I used to spend on bamboo canes which would often just break anyway and uh, you know these just basically last forever although I never seem to have quite enough so I'm going to tie those in with hemp string uh, I find hemp strings good to do in summer it won't last all the way through winter but I'll switch to reusable cable ties once the plants are a bit further grown so I've put uh, one of the nets over this storage beetroot crop. We're still getting a little bit of damage on this storage beet from uh, leaf beet miner, so figured that it's best to give it a little bit of protection. It's not ideal, this net, because obviously when you open it, you kind of trap all the leaves, but uh, I'm not intending to really touch this bed uh, very often, and I'll need this net later on in the season anyway, so. Uh, once the plants get a bit bigger and they need a bit of a good weed, probably in about a month's time, I will uh, move it. <laughs> it's, it's hardly well sealed. <laughs> all these nets uh, all need rebuilding, really. So I'm going to take this lettuce bed out. It seems a shame. There's still plenty of good lettuce leaves on here. Um, but some of them are starting to raise the seed here and uh, some of them just passed the best. I've taken most of the hearts out of all of these lettuces, uh, you know, the best part of the lettuce, basically. Uh, there's a couple bits left over, might take some of those out as well, uh, give those away. But uh, I want to put new lettuce in here. Um, you know, this is not going to see me through until, you know, sort of mid autumn. Uh, whereas the lettuce that I'm going to be planting out in here in, you know, a day or two's time will see me through. And so it's a worthy sacrifice because I've got a really nice lettuce bed that's ready now. So, um, as I say, I don't really need this now. Because as I'm fond of saying in gardening, you really do need to know when to make the sacrifice of an old bed in order to move on. And, uh, and this is pretty good. Although, as I'm sitting down here, <laughs> I just found one plant that's absolutely like been decimated by slugs or caterpillars or something. I can't actually see what the guilty party is right now, but I'll show you it. 
that is uh, looking pretty grim. All the others seem okay, so I'll just replant that station, I think. This bed is dry as well. So uh, yeah, I'll soon be taking these leaks out. And uh, as I say, this bed should see us through until, you know, early September sometime, middle of September, something like that. And then the autumn bed that I'm just about to sow, uh, plant will be uh, ready. Managed to make a nice quick batch of salads up from those cuttings. Right, so that's pretty much cleared. So what I've got to do now is get some of these leaves out of the way because they're going to get in the way of the lettuce and they're not needed. There's plenty of leaves up here to uh, finish off these little squashes. And I really don't want the plants putting lots of growth into side shoots and things. So yeah, let's just get all this trimmed off around here. Yeah, that's looking way better. So it looks like good planting weather at the moment, but it's gonna be really hot this afternoon. So I'm gonna come back tonight and pop the modules in, but I've made the holes giving them a good little bit of a water and uh, yeah so should be just about perfect tonight as I said and then it's actually going to be a bit like rainy tomorrow so really can't get better weather for planting lettuce than that. Right I really wanted to leave these potatoes in for a bit longer but not really to grow just to allow them to store in the damp compost but I now need this space because I've got to put some uh, Asian greens in. So I'm going to take them out. This bed was New Zealand spinach last year. And New Zealand spinach is a really great self-seeder. So I'm surprised that I haven't got more of it. But uh, yeah, maybe I just buried it really deeply. So these are nice. These are Estima. And... Uh, a good size really, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with those lot, oh, coming out okay, a few small ones but mostly baking size, let's get those out, yeah that's a really nice tub of potatoes out of this uh, admittedly pretty big <laughs> container, so yeah let's get that processed and get these, this prepared for Asian greens and they've got the same harvested that one as well last night so uh, that was a pretty good harvest as well don't need many Asian greens at this time of year basically just for salads so I'm back there's the lettuces that I'm going to sow Rickia, Navara, Canasta and Flashy Lightning Butter Oak and a whole load of different Asian greens. So red tatsoi, red stem patchoi, and komatsuma and tatsoi. It's all looking pretty nice. And I'm going to interplant the lettuces with these salad onions as well. Quite a nice selection of salad onions in already. In addition to the ones that we're harvesting right now. So they're looking quite nice. I've packed them in quite tight because I'm only going to be using these for salads and left the tatsoi down there. I've got to find somewhere else to put that because it needs more space. So just pop those in. I like to just firm them in, press them deep down into the module. So they're about a centimetre below soil level. I always find that just helps with the watering and it just gets the root ball just a little bit deeper down in moister soil. So I'm happy with that. I just put this tempering net over them for a few weeks. And uh, yeah, take that off as I say, a few weeks time when they're a bit bigger and they need a bit more attention. So now on to the last important job uh, today. And I'm watering the peppers and the tomatoes. So I have a pretty simple system for doing it. I fill this one with the concentrate and I'm using Chili Focus 
um, fertilizer for this and then I basically know that I need one watering can for each of my half pepper beds so and I need 10 seconds of water from the concentrate I fill that from the dip tank and I'm ready Uh, because I'm watering into the halos, it's a real joy. It used to be really frustrating. The water would all just run all over the place. And I used twice as much water. But now I'm just watering into the halo, a little bit into the centre. Water into the halo, a little bit into the centre. Into the halo, a little bit into the centre. So basically it just goes like that. And uh, yeah, it's a really quick and simple process. I don't mind getting a little bit of water on the fruits because it's going to be really sunny later and uh, they'll dry off no problem. And that is basically all I need for the week because of the strulch mulch that's down which really does retain the water really well. And one of the things I really like about the halos is that the water doesn't kind of flood the plants. It drains in, you know, over quite a slow period of time, maybe half an hour to an hour, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really nice. The plants don't get sort of oversaturated. And I say, I just give them like a little bit of water in the center. Um, not too much actually because I like to encourage the roots to sort of grow outwards into the main bed rather than just you know concentrate in the original pot which otherwise seems to happen so yeah really happy with these peppers they're looking really fine so next I'm doing the same thing with the tomatoes and I use this um, Green Futures organic tomato fertilizer. And yeah, so basically I just plug it in here. As you can see, when it comes to feeding plants, I don't really subscribe to some exact science. Then I fill that up and it's 10 again. One, two. And then I fill that one up. ready to go and then again in here it's all the same because it's all halos in here as well and I'm basically doing count to six count to three and I count to six count to three I might be getting those counts slightly off because I can't count and talk at the same time. And the tomatoes, I will um, water twice a week, uh, not with feed. So just feed once a week and then I um, water just with plain water. And I feed the cucumbers actually tomato food as well. And I also feed the squash with the tomato food, so it just makes it easier for me not to have lots of different types of feed to uh, keep buying. And I also do the winter, no, not the summer squashes as well with tomato food and they're a bit, <laughs> a bit difficult to spot down here so the plants are growing a bit sort of crazy but uh, somewhere around there and the only other things that gonna need watering outside are the early strawberries for next year and obviously these are quite big plants in quite small hanging baskets and the outdoor cherry tomatoes 
which are <laughs> absolutely heaving. And there we go, that's the watering done. And that is me done. It's interesting now, starting to get a few tomatoes starting to ripen. Uh, a few of these Sambazanos, <laughs> you know, a pitiful crop, but it's nice to see things ripening up. Anyway, I'm all done. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.